Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Those Ash Wednesday words invite us every year into the season of Lent. Now you may remember back in the olden days, like last year, when people gathered in person at church just to hear those words and to receive a cross of ashes on their foreheads. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Lent is an entire season that invites us to consider sin and death, our death, our mortality, and the fleetingness of all of life. Now, it may surprise you to realize that today is the final Sunday in the season of Lent. In our pandemic-induced time warp, it may seem to you like Lent just started. Or, alternatively, it may seem that you have been sporting your ashen cross for an entire year, which would be understandable. I cannot think of a more Lenten year than these past 12 months. No one has had to remind us this year that life is fleeting, that we are mortal, and nothing is certain. We haven't just contemplated death, we have lived it. Death at every turn. The literal physical deaths of over half a million Americans, nearly 47,000 of them Texans, our fellow Texans, and that alone is an unprecedented tragedy. But along with the physical deaths are the countless smaller deaths that we have all experienced in varying degrees. The death of jobs, the death of school as we knew it, the death of food security and housing, the death of live music, theater, sporting events, and the social activities that bring us joy, the death of our sense of certainty and control. And it's as if all of this had somehow not captured our attention, Mother Nature brought us the big freeze, resulting in 57 Texas deaths and countless hardships. So, I think we get it now. We are finite. We are vulnerable. Deaths, large and small, are real. So we begin each Lent with Ash Wednesday's invitation to consider death, and we close Lent with a similar invitation. John's Gospel describes the moment when Jesus declares, it's time, it is time for me to die. He and his friends are at the Passover festival in Jerusalem when some Greeks who are there ask Philip for an introduction to Jesus. Their desire to meet him is the marker for Jesus, the signal to him that his time has come. And Jesus, while acknowledging that his soul is troubled, is ready to face what comes. He grasps his harsh current reality as a teaching moment for his friends, who he knows will be devastated by what is to come. He invites them and us to consider death. Very truly, I tell you, he says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. That's the condensed story of all creation. Death brings forth new life. A grain of wheat, a small grain, falls into the earth. And over time, it cracks wide open. Then water and soil nutrients impact it, and it begins to grow into something that looks completely other, a tall stalk of wheat bearing many grains that can be harvested to make flour, to make bread, to feed bodies, to bring life, all from a single grain that died in the ground. Jesus knows that his own death will be like that grain of wheat. It will lead to new life in ways his friends cannot begin to imagine at this point. Jesus invites his friends to join him on the death to life journey. He says, whoever is willing to let go of life as they know it 
to die to their life will find new life, he promises, life from death. Now, in the church year, we spend these next couple of weeks moving painstakingly through Jesus' suffering, his passion, his brutal execution, his burial, his friends' devastation and hopelessness. And even though we know the happy ending that is to come, it's painful to move through the story with the disciples, to share their anguished grief. I yearn to skip right over the suffering and dying part and head straight to resurrection. I'm done with Lent. Bring me Easter. And I feel the same way about our current situation. Bring me life. I want to live my life again, to gather with you at church, to make plans, to hug my grandchildren. I want to do it now. But as much as we would like to, we can't skip ahead. New life from death is a process. And together, we have experienced countless deaths this past year. So what might happen if we were to welcome those deaths as opportunities for new, fruit-bearing life? The grains of our lives, our expectations, our desires, our habits and hopes have been dropped into the earth. They're being cracked open and something new, something other will emerge in time. It's too early to tell what that might look like exactly. And just as Jesus' friends could not have imagined the life and fruit that grew exponentially from Jesus' death, we cannot imagine at this early point what new life will come from this death-permeated year. We can hope that our new life, collectively and individually, would be kinder and more patient, that we would become more creative and resourceful as an optimal way of life, not just as a frantic necessity. This afternoon, this Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock, St. David's offers us the opportunity to think collectively and intentionally about all of this in the form of a virtual panel discussion and breakout groups to ponder the impact of this year of death and the possible new life and fruit that might grow from it. You can register at stdave.org to receive a link to this conversation and to participate. I wonder... To what sort of life, what sort of new life is God inviting us, inviting you? And what are we doing to welcome and encourage that new life, new ways of bearing fruit within ourselves and within our families and communities? Last month at the virtual diocesan council, the Archbishop of South Africa shared a compelling sermon about moving forward. I'd like to read you the skeletal notes I jotted down from his eloquent message. He said, tomorrow should not be just another name for today. Hope, dream, act. Bring curiosity about what tomorrow might be like. Curiosity invites us to dream something new. Tomorrow should not be just another name for today. I say amen to that. The greatest tragedy of this death-ridden season would be to fail to allow new life and new fruit to grow from the many deaths that we've experienced. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit, new life, new fruit from death. Thanks be to God.